Hello and good morning, friends. Today, I want to talk to you about how to properly drain that and what the pre-charge should look like, as well as how do you check to see what the pressure is supposed to be, right? So let's get into it. <clears throat> First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you find where the tank is and where the closest exit to the property is, right? The reason why, in order to drain the tank, you have to get rid of the water somehow. Now, you could, in theory, just put it right into a utility sink just like that, but sometimes you don't get a small tank, right? This is a 33.4 gallon tank, so, you know, probably about 15, 20 gallons of water at a full cycle. That's a lot of water. So if you have a utility sink that's close by, you could do that, but sometimes it's a lot easier just to go through a back door, a window, or depending on how small it is, you might be able to fill buckets. Sometimes you get some really, really big tanks where putting it into a utility sink can be a little bit more of a headache than it's worth, right? So on this particular property, we're just going through the back door. Super easy, super straightforward. We just put it right outside and then we're gonna hook up a hose to the hose bib. That's gonna look like this. All right, so we've got our hose hooked up. The best place to do it is gonna be on the tank T assembly itself, which is gonna be this part right here, right? This hose bib is designed to drain the tank as well as do any other things like a chlorination, a yield, etc. So we're gonna hook up to this bad boy just cause we'll get the highest flow and the highest uh, draw from the tank. We want to make sure that we're keeping an eye on the filters that we've got over here. Best practice is to avoid going through them while you're draining it, but you want to go with the lowest point on the tank. And the reason you want to go to the lowest point is so that way you can make sure that you get all of the water out of the tank. So right here, we're going to go ahead and turn off the water to the house. And the reason that we want to turn the water off to the house is just so it makes it a little bit faster to drain in the tank. So we've gone ahead and we've opened this up. We can see here that the pressure is starting to drop, but we've still got power on the pressure switch. So what do we do? We need to turn the power off. So on this particular property, they have the shutoff right there. Sometimes you have to actually go over to the circuit panel to turn the power off. So while this drains, this is gonna be our pressure switch, right? So how this will work is all of the pressure from the water will go up through that stem right there and the spring in the back is what's going to be our cut on cut off right that'll tell us for our pressure this one this little tiny guy on the other side that's going to be our differential so that'll be a 20 point swing you can increase or decrease by rotating it don't mess with that so our pressure is going to come from this guy right here every rotation clockwise increases a psi every rotation counterclockwise decreases a psi so this particular tank is going to have a 4060 switch, right? So we can see right down here what that is. So a 4060 switch, what that means is at 40 PSI, the pump will turn on, and at 60 PSI, the pump will turn off. So now that we've emptied the tank, let's go ahead and figure out what our pre-charge is supposed to be. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this part off right here. And you're going to see that it's just a normal Schrader valve like you'd see on a car tire. And all you got to do is you just take a tire pressure gauge, just like this one, and you just put it, put it right on, right? Push it on nice and good. We can see that we're just above 25. Oops. And then what it should be is 38 PSI, right? So if we've got all of our pressure up top a little bit lower than what it should be, we run into the risk of having issues with the bladder. So how these pressure tanks work is you're actually gonna have the top part is air, bottom part's water, and there's a bladder in between. So what'll happen is the air that's sitting up top is actually gonna count or basically be a counterbalance for the water that's pushing up on it. And the benefit of having it that way is when you lose power, the air pressure will stay there. So when power returns, the pump will engage and you'll have pressure in the home again. So the pressure tank, its job is to pressurize the water in the house and how it does that's just pneumatics, right? As the pump pushes the water into the home, it's gonna compress that air. That compressed air will then push the water through the rest of the way. Over time, generally, you're gonna lose one to two PSI of, of pressure every year, give or take, right? So from time to time, you have to drain it down just like we did. And then when you need to fill it up, you just take a compressor, hook it right up to that trader valve, fill it to where it needs to be. The pre-charge should always be two PSI less than the cut on, right? So in this particular circumstance, it's a 4060 switch. That means it should be 38. If you have a 2040 switch, it should be 18. 3050 switch, it should be 28, right? So you always wanna have it less than two. 
Now, let's just say, for example, that you have a 3050 switch and it's 38 PSI inside of there. What'll happen? So what will happen is the pump will compress that air to the, uh, the correct uh, cutoff point, but it won't actually engage until the pressure tank is empty. So you're gonna get like a hard throttle, uh, basically a, a complete empty back up to top, back down, back up, et cetera. And you'll kind of get a real aggressive pulsation. Sometimes you'll also hear rattling in the, uh, in the piping and the fittings as well. So super important to make sure you check this from time to time. Generally, I recommend to homeowners every five or 10 years, drain the whole thing down, take a look at it. Or if you wanna do it like when you're doing your water heater, when you drain the tank out for the water heater, go ahead, drain your pressure tank, check the pressure, make sure everything's doing what it's supposed to do. If you keep on top of that air pressure, you will get a longer service life out of your pressure tank, guaranteed, right? If you don't, if you let that air pressure get too low, what'll happen is the pump will compress that air and it will push the bladder. Over time, by pushing and contracting that, that bladder, that bladder is eventually gonna rupture. Once it's broken, you're done. You gotta replace the tank. They're not cheap, right? So you wanna do your best to make sure that this thing lasts as long as you can to save money and also so that your utilities continue to play nice. How you'll know that the bladder is broken is you'll get a, a pulsation in the water. It'll be very subtle and it's a little bit difficult to see unless you know what you're looking for. But how you'll usually see is like, we've got the laundry over here, right? You'll be doing your laundry and you hear click, 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 click. That's the pressure switch short cycling. Usually that's going to be because of the bladder being bad, right? I hope that this was helpful in teaching you how to drain the pressure tank and check the air pressure inside of your system. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, right? I have videos posted every day on the world of well and septic. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button and subscribe. Till next time, guys.